Hi, this is Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group with today's investor tip. Today I'm with Brad Sheppy with Minnesota Landlord Law. How are you doing, Brad? Fantastic today, Scott. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being here. So today Brad's going to help us with the topic of LLCs and your investment property. Should I buy in an LLC or not? And then maybe some of the uh, pros and cons of having it set up and, and, and things you need to be aware of. So Brad, I'm going to hand it over to you and say... I'm thinking about buying a property in an LLC. What kind of questions would you have for me? Uh, well, first of all, this is a great topic. And if, if any of you out there have gone on to bigger pockets or online, you know already that the answers are across the spectrum, right? Or even if you've spoken to an attorney, they may say, yes, you need all of your properties in LLC or you need yes, to buy separate LLC. LLCs, right? Yes. Or the parent and child LLC or series LLC. Or you'll have folks say, Gosh darn it, like just do the insurance, get an umbrella policy, and you're fine. Right. Um, so, okay, let's back up. LLC, limited liability company. Correct. And the purpose is to limit your liability, obviously. But how does it even do that? Gotcha. So, for today's purpose, we're just going to assume the question is whether or not we have an LLC in Minnesota. We're going to eliminate the concept of Wyoming, Delaware, or any out of state. Right. That's for a whole nother deeper dive. We're in 101 land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, agree. I agree. Thank you. Okay. So um, the reason you have an, an LLC and want to consider owning property LLC is if, in fact, something goes wrong and you're sued, um, then the liability stops at the LLC and doesn't pursue you personally, your name, your spouse's name, your, your family assets, um, all of that is protected because we have a whole history of case law that protects the the LLC as a separate legal entity so long as it's structured properly and you practice your business practices follow that separate structure so that you're not commingling LLC and personal money, et cetera, et cetera. So the first question on if you're buying a property would be oftentimes we have folks who buy you know, you just mentioned a fourplex, single family home through a fourplex. And if you're buying um, and you're interested in a 30 year loan, like you're buying a regular house, regular Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, yeah. 30 year financing, right? If you're doing that, then you are, you're almost 100% going to be required to purchase that property in your individual name. Because it's not set up like a local bank or credit union where you have, you can purchase a property with an LLC and that they have a portfolio loan. They hold on to the loan. They have a personal guarantee. Entirely different deal. So out of the gate, if someone calls me and says, hey, I, my name's Tim. I'm going to buy my first duplex. I wanted to buy an LLC. I would say, call your mortgage broker. You likely cannot because if you want that great interest rate and the money, first purchase with your name and then call me back. I can talk to you about the risks and the rewards after purchase if in fact you transfer via quick claim deed to an LLC. Okay, right. And, and, and frankly, that's how I started out. I was buying um, small multi units in my name. Yep. And uh, many of those, you know, we ended up you know, selling off as condominiums and stuff. And then eventually I wisened up and, and made some relationships with, and I shouldn't say wisened up, but I, I broadened my, my, um, my horizons a bit and started talking to local banks and took out more commercial finance. Gotcha. Which typically that's, you know, what, you know, it can, it can be a lot of different things, but for me it was always usually a, a five year or seven year yep. fixed term, fixed rate. And then after that there was a, a reset or balloon payment, I guess. If you Correct. Will. So, so that's good point. That's always an option. Um, and it's usually, as you mentioned, a little bit more savvier, buyer investor where it's not your first property it's your third or fourth and you intend to do something where you likely don't intend to own the property long term and maybe you're doing more remodeling and you want a little bit more protection and so you absolutely want that asset in LLC yes you can talk to a local credit union a local bank and you can even purchase that four unit property or duplex with a local bank with an LLC but that's usually someone who has a little bit more assets in the bank so if something goes wrong the bank knows they have a personal guarantee that's worth more than the paper it's signed with right right so um but so one, just to kind of bring our conversation forward uh, a common question is hey Brad I own 3 4 5 single family homes duplex properties 
and we'll just keep the theme residential here for less. What should I do? Should I continue to own them in my name? And they all have those 30 year loans still. What right. should I do? And so an attorney always needs to give be who wants to stick around for a while needs to be conservative. They need right. to tell them, well, you can quit claim deed, but here are the risks. So yes, as you likely know, we have a lot of smart people watching that there's a due on sale clause. That's real. That doesn't go away. That has teeth. That could come into play. And so anytime you're talking to an attorney, um, it's a conversation of what is my benefit to doing this decision and what is my potential downside. And so, so you're saying if someone's, they own in their name uh, and they say, I'm going to quit claim it yes. into an LLC, like yes. a, as it, that may be their strategy, the due on sale clause could kick in and say, oh, by the way, that's a, you know, that's technically a transfer. Yeah. yeah. There was a sale or transfer of the property. So you owe us all this money. Yes. So then, then the, then the note is called and the lender's like, you're, you know, we're done with you. But generally speaking, uh, banks just like to accept money. So if you're generally paying them on time, it's it's you're you're likely fine. But an attorney's never going to give you a guarantee, but it's unlikely. And so the protections are so practically, we can have this debate forever, but practically at the end of the day, why do you want an LLC? It's because we mentioned at the beginning the potential lawsuits. And they usually are one of two things: personal injury lawsuit. Or like a slip and fall. Someone right. slipped and fell. It could be your tenant. could be someone nearby who's um, slipped and fall or they fell off the, the deck or something. That's one bucket. It's a very expensive lawsuit. I have heard of people tripping on grass and then trying to get the landlord <laughs> to pay for it and saying it's, that the, the grass was too tall. It's possible. The, the bar is pretty low, to be honest, for right. attorneys to file cases without being disbarred. And so... Um, so they may take those cases on contingency. So, yes, there are cases that you you may almost laugh at, but there are some attorneys who are willing to go to risk filing the case to get a payday. Um, so, but specifically, that's that is a bucket. And the other one really is is actually I think happens more often, which is you're sued for your management practices. You you have you in your rental criteria you stated something. That is in violation of a federal law. So here's an example that I've been on a case before. Landlords being sued for, it just says $50,000 or more for a, a lawsuit based upon the fact that you advertised your unit for rent for a certain dollar amount. And then when, lo and behold, when they came to sign a lease, you're charging more. You're uh -huh. asking for more rent. And you're tripping yourself of a federal statute that opens that that tenant and consumer protection attorney to an attorney fee provision as well. And so then you might be sued, which so is that's not often talked about, but I would say is more common in this new highly regulatory litigious uh, environment we're in. So those are two generally speaking. Um, so then, then you have to analyze are, if you're insured, are you covered? Right. And right. so I always recommend First, if they come to me, talk to your insurance broker and have the same conversation. Tell me about my owner's policy and my declaration page, and when am I? When can I tender a lawsuit to the insurer? And well, and the insurance guys hate it when I say this, I'm sure, but I always say, have your policy looked at yeah. by an attorney. Yeah, because it's it's not just what your coverages are; it's what your exclusions are. Yes, exactly. And you could have just a, like time, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, yeah, a trillion dollars of coverage, but <laughs> everything's excluded, so you've yes. got nothing. Yes, and so, so the main thing you want to be protected on is not only the potential dollar amount payout, but attorneys' fees as well. So they call it tendering to your insurance company. In, in your perfect world, even if you're in the pro you own the property in your name, and you're sued you can tender that claim to the insurance company and they protect you and you're out maybe a deductible, but they hire the attorney and they settle the entire case. Um, and it's usually, that result does not happen um, because of those exclusions mm -hmm. of coverage. Ranging from you had knowledge of a certain condition that you did nothing about um, to high, you know, it's usually a higher level of standard why an insurance company would deny coverage. But that's 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 your nightmare scenario is you own property as an individual or you signed the lease um, Scott Picaric landlord with the tenant Tim or Ann Johnson um, 
and Ann and Tim are suing you individually. And now you're like, wow, this isn't good. Um, and so then you have to, let's say you tender that case, it's denied. You're defending that case out of pocket. That's a bad scenario. In the, it, however, if you have an LLC and you are sued individually, so oftentimes an attorney will, uh, and a consumer advocate attorney will sue the entity those who manages the property, they'll sue the landlord. Um, and so is the, the more times that you can have that, you know, they're, they're playing a game, they don't land on your name, but they land on LLC, Right. the more times they have roadblocks. So if and when they file a lawsuit and they name you personally, you can file a motion to dismiss that there's no, there's no basis in law or fact that allows them to have a claim against you, Scott, because you had the lease with um, Super Real, T Real Estate LLC was the landlord who signed the contract, um, and you had an L separately, you may have had the property owned by Scott 123 LLC, and you never had a contractual relationship with the tenant, and you were smart enough to know that my business practices and bank accounts and everything else needs to be in order. And then that case, if they're suing, they're limited to the liability of the property, not your bank account. So there's a lot that goes into play. There's lots of things we didn't cover right now, such right. as you need to look at um, your the due on sale clause of your mortgage, as I mentioned before, um, but also your title insurance, right? That's right. one thing that's not often talked about is um, you want to make sure that the in title, if you're going to transfer from Scott Picard to 123 LLC, that you still have continuity of title and title insurance covers. And may there be a reissue fee, yes. right, if you change entities. And, and so some cases they define who's the insured. And some the insured could be if it is just you or your, let's say, your spouse, you may be covered under that existing policy. So that's a whole other lens. There's, there's, And then as well, if you're transferring it, you're getting into... Um, property and owner's insurance. So, so it's, uh, not, it's not a simple answer. It's not a simple answer, but I would say if you, if I'm going to boil this all down, you're going to take something away, I would say you know, the more assets you have, the more likely you should be careful and have everything in LLC. The more you're starting off, the more that you have less assets, the more that you have to purchase that first or second property in, an, in your name, and the more likely that you are, you know, you, you, you you won't have as much financial exposure in the short term. So it's a right. continuum. So I always really assess who am I talking to? Who are their assets? What are they trying to accomplish? And also, do they self-manage or do they have a property management company that's licensed and insured? Because if they've, like as I mentioned before, if that management company is responsible for inspections and leasing, then even if there's a lawsuit, it shouldn't be the owner who has a contract with the management company to provide all those services. Um, it should be... The, le the owner of the property, even an individual name, should be able to get out of that lawsuit because it's the management company that may have made a mistake. So Yeah, typically there's indemnification language in yeah. the management of contracts that most property managers won't waive. Yep. You know, and, and you know, now if there's gross negligence and then it's a whole other topic. Sure, you know, exactly. Yeah. You know, so if it's if it's the you know, the property you buy a property and you've got faulty electrical and the tenant like uh or, or, or faulty plumbing and yep. the tenant stuff gets ruined yeah, they're they're gonna probably Correct. sue uh, sue everyone. Yeah, whole other topic is is yeah exactly property yeah. management companies and the property management contracts and what should you know individuals and owners do. But um, I would say the, the risk really is is that if you're self managing and you really don't know what you're doing and you're not spending the time on the property, um, that is a risk factor that I would say maybe leans you towards a quick clean being an LLC as well. Okay, so a lot to this, and I'm, and there's a lot left. Uh, if someone wants to learn more, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Thanks, Scott. The best way to get a hold of me is either by my cell phone or my website. My cell phone is 612-770-7447, and my website is <coughs> minnesotalandlordlaw.com, all spelled out, really easy. And you can go to my website and click on the top to schedule a time and a phone consultation, and you'll immediately have uh, be on my Google Calendar and pop up for a time. Awesome. Awesome. Really, really, really helpful, Brad. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Scott. You bet. And I'm Scott Picard with Verde Real Estate Group, and we hope this content has been valuable uh, to you. If you want to get a hold of us, like always, the number is 
8888. Call or text or online 24-7 at verde-realestate.com. If there's any way we could be of further service, please let us know. Thank you.